On today's episode of Cook Like a Bastard, we're going south of the border. No, not to Iowa. All the way down to Mexico. Yes, we're going to be making some carnitas. We're going to be making some salsa. I got a new tortilla press, so we're going to be using that. I got a bag full of limes, so we might as well make some margaritas too here on Cook Like a Bastard. We're going to be making carnitas here, carnita tacos, and carnitas is a slow roasted pork which takes about three hours to make and it is tasty, tasty, tasty. I'm going to start with about three and a half pounds of pork shoulder here. But let's do some of the prep work first. So you're going to be cooking this in a Dutch oven um, on a low heat again for about three hours. So we start with our little flavor goodness pack here. And to make my little flavor goodness pack, I have some cheesecloth. You don't have to eat the cheesecloth. Get some marjoram, four or five sprigs there. Um, some coriander seeds, whole. A couple bay leaves. A couple cloves of, cloves of garlic. Oh darn, we have to crush them. Bam! Whoops, sorry, that was too loud. Bam! I can't help myself. I just can't help myself. So anyhow, we take these guys here in the little cheesecloth, and then we're just gonna tie her up here. Make sure you seal it up nicely. This time, because we tied a very successful knot here on Cook Like a Bastard, so this will be our nummy flavor pack. So the next step here is to take an onion, and I'm going to quarter it. This is a large onion, I guess, and quarter it by the root side down. That would be halving it. If you, have, if you need the math, that would be halving, and this is quartering it. Very, very simple. And I'm um, going to have some salt that we'll put in the bottom pan when we assemble this whole thing. So next comes the pork shoulder. You can hold, um, have a pork shoulder, you can have a pork butt. But I didn't think I could say butt on TV like that. So I am just going to go with the shoulder, you know. Bad enough I get the cook like the beep on any time I try to introduce the show. So we went with the shoulder to keep the FCC in line. So you don't want to trim any of the fat on this because the fat is goodness on this. And you're going to be cutting this down into about two inch cubes. So just kind of have at it. Do some preliminary trimming. And you're going to keep, this is a bone in, you can have the bone in or bone out. I'm going to cook it with the bone in and then we'll get rid of the bone at the end. Makes bad tacos when you have a bone in it. Oh, very crunchy, Dave. I hate it when they call me Dave, you know. But they do when they say, oh, that was crunchy, Dave. So, um, again, we're going to just cut this down. Some good fat. Now, remember, fat is flavor. And fat is a lot of a pork shoulder. But you're going to be cooking this down, and this is what makes this so good. And this is, again, why it's going to be cooking for three hours. When you're watching someone else do the cooking and you get bored, one thing you might want to do is go to cooklikeabastard.com. On cooklikeabastard.com, you're going to see all of our shows, our promos, some behind-the-scenes stuff. And also an opportunity to buy some great Cook Like a Bastard merchandise. And who wouldn't want that? The holidays can't be that far away. I'm not sure which one, but we're always close to the holiday. So we're going to cut this down into two inch cubes and when we get done with that we'll put it in the pan. See how this goodness um, continues here and cook. Bah! Like a bastard. Okay so we have cut up the pork shoulder in small small pieces. We cut off the skin, we threw that out but keep the fat here. We're keeping the bone because we think that's going to be nummy. And when we start out here I got a, um, some salt, kosher salt, I'm just putting on the bottom of my pan here which I've turned on to a low heat already. And I've quartered my onion, you remember that. Just drop these caps in here. Our spice flavor here. And I was looking at everything we're adding and I go, hmm think we're missing a little something. And I happen to find half a jalapeno laying around. Imagine that in the bastard kitchen. So I'm going to put this in here and then we're going to add the meat. I'm going to start with the bone fat down. And if you put the fat down on most of it, you're going to be happier with your results. 
Again, these are about two inch cubes of pork shoulder. You can use pork butt if the FCC doesn't care. Doesn't mind if you say that. You don't have to say butt that funny, but sometimes you do. Here we go. We, we filled this up. This is a very heavy um, Dutch oven. And we fill this up here. Now you want to cover this, just cover this with water. And if you can find a pitcher prettier than this one, you can use that. But I think this one looks pretty nice. So you fill this up so it's, so just so it's covered. Turn your heat up to, to medium. And you're going to be cooking for a while because this is going to be here for about three hours here and cook. Like a bastard. our own salsa here which is going to be better than what you can buy tastier and probably even better for you so we're starting with some simple ingredients here some cilantro some garlic some tomatoes I chose Roma tomatoes here a couple jalapenos a lime a little bit of a red onion and some salt and just a pinch of cayenne so I'm going to start by um, chopping up my garlic here and I have five six cloves you know if you keep your clove of garlic to, to tomato ratio on, I think you're probably doing okay. I'm going to just drop these in my food processor here. And while those caps are chopping up and flying all over the place, I'm going to put my hand over it. And they make these great little covers here. They work well too. Uh, so we'll let those guys chop up just a little bit. Turn that off. Chop up my onion just in spaging here. I'm going to put this in the same with the garlic. I'm going to put the cover on, important safety tip. Chop up those onions and keep on pulverizing the garlic. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to be um, taking my jalapenos here. And that sounds like that's done there. I'm going to cut my jalapenos in half. And then I'm going to quarter them before I put them into the magical food processor here. So these can join the garlic and the, the onions. You want to make sure these get nice and fine. Sometimes, you know, your jalapenos just kind of um, chop in and, um, and goop it up. Just pulse it occasionally and it will be happy again. You want to mix these up fine because your heat is coming from your jalapenos. So wrap that up here. And whoa, we have a tasty and a need for a little bit of smell of vision here because that's a tasty little combination we got. So I got this here. Now we're going to go to the big side of the food processor, put my bigger blade in here. And take my Roma tomatoes, you know, stem them off. If you take the little stem off, I think it might be even a little nummier for you. Then you might want to just cut them in half before you put them in maybe even quarters but never never yeah we like to go back and little memory lane about how to cut up potatoes we're not even going to teach you that with our with our tomatoes here you want to cut these up so they chop up quicker and they're kind of a little coarser so you take these guys drop them in here and do the little rough cut on these guys this on, off, and pulse it. Because you don't want to cut them too fine because then you end up with um, tomato juice. Give it another pulse or two. And then find your appropriate tool, which is always good to have at least one appropriate tool. So I'm going to scoop these out and put them in. I like to use a cheese grater to do it because. Well, you know, I'm not putting any cheese in here, but it's good to think about the dairy farmers who produce the cheese for you. Things don't grow on trees, not everything. But those apples do. Don't forget the apples. Have you ever used an apple in a Cook Like a Bastard show? I wonder. You know, if, if you're not sure if we did or not, you can see all of our shows at cooklikeabastard.com and go, oh, yes, they did. In episode blah, 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 they actually used an apple. Uh, my trip down memory lane tells me I don't think we did. Now you might want to do this neater than I am, but I got like five people here that are going to clean up after me. You don't, so uh, you might want to mix it in that, uh, with the proper tool. Uh, we have such a great mess here, and I can't stop talking about it because it's delightful. Um, we put a little lime juice in there. 
cut your lime in half, put it in your juicer, put it right into your food processor. Let's do that again. That's kind of fun. Mmm, that's some lime. That is some lime. You know, limes in the eye sting just as much as lemons. A little science for you here and cook like a bastard. So I am going to coarsely chop my cilantro before I put it in there. Because I love the taste of cilantro. And I want to make sure I got enough in there. And it's not going to get chopped up that well in the food processor, I can tell. Take a handful of cilantro in here. Boy, just shove it in, you know, put, put some salt in there. Take a little cayenne. Take your plunger, push her down, pulse her up. Take it out, open it up, find a clean utensil. Just to give, make sure you got the right quantities here. We hit it right the first time here on Cook Like a Bastard. So periodically you want to come by and kind of scoop some of the foam off of here. Apparently foam isn't flavor. So these are guys going to be simmering for a while. Enjoy yourself. Well the clam crew went up in Northern California. It was time for lunch. Stopped by at a little roadside stand and had some tacos. The woman there was making fresh tortillas and they were so easy and so good. We said next time we do a show we're going to make some tortillas. And that's what we're doing today. We're making fresh flour tortillas and it starts with two cups of flour. We're going to put in a half teaspoon of baking soda or powder actually. A um, half teaspoon of salt and about um, a quarter cup of, of shortening. You can use lard if you want. Lard kind of scares me. Can you imagine? Lard actually scares me. Uh, so we decided to just go with the shortening which is fine. So what you do, you want to mix this up with your pastry knife. So you mix this up um, in, in about two, three, three minutes. And then you add a cup of fairly hot water you know, um, fa faucet temperature. Mix in some of that. And then just mix it up a little bit. I'm going to use a fork just to get it started. And just mix it up and then put in the rest of your water. And this is when you start judging. Is there too much water or not enough water? And you will know if it just feels too sticky when you get down to it, you know, add a little more flour. If it feels too dry, add a little more water. So once you get it together here, you're going to want to um, knead it for about 10 minutes because this is essential to make a good mess and to get the um, gluten stretched a little bit so these things will hold together and be tasty, tasty tortillas for you. So while you're... Uh, while you're kneading it, you may want to um, add a little bit of flour occasionally. So we continue kneading this thing for about 10 minutes and then we're going to cut it into little balls, probably about 10 of them. And those each will turn into a tortilla. So I just kind of roll this out like a jelly roll, cut it in half, and then Cut it here again, and one more time. We're going to make it into eight pieces because we really feel that is the perfect size once you start working with the dough. So we're going to cut this, tear this in half, tear this in half. It's kind of like Play-Doh. It's kind of fun. You know, I was reading the recipe for Play-Doh with real flour. He actually used cream of tartar in it. If that ain't I irony. So anyhow, we take these balls and then we roll them up. Roll them there, you can roll them like this. A lot of ways to roll your balls here and kick, cook like a bastard. So these are, you know, a little bigger than, than a golf ball. A lot bigger than a golf ball sometimes. 
and then sometimes smaller. Consistency. If you want consistency, I say go to the tortilla store and do that. Because we're not really about the consistency over here. We're about the process. Except when you see one that's this big, you really got to make it go a little bit smaller. So how many did we end up with? We ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. I can't count that high. Here on Cook, we'll be back. We'll let these sit for a few moments like a bastard. So we've let our um, dough sit for about 10 minutes here and now we're going to press them. Now we're using a tortilla press. You could roll them out with a rolling pin if you want, but I thought this roll, this tor tortilla press was so cool. Fresh from Colombia, it's cast iron. It's really pretty sexy, I think, during the cast iron. So I'm going to put a piece of plastic here to separate the dough from, from either side. You don't have to, it just makes the cleaning easier and detaches. But watch how easy this is. Do that, press, and you're done making your tortilla. That's a lot easier than rolling, huh? So I've lit my little pan here. I have another cast iron pan that I've heat up. So it's nice and warm. And we're going to let that sit for about a, a minute on each side. Let's do that again. Got my little ball. Put it in the tortilla press. Cover up with plastic. Pull it over. Press down and go one, two, three, or uno, dos, tres. Now that's a tortilla. Woo, baby, that's a tortilla. Flip you over. And we're gonna let that sit for about a, a minute. Take it off. And then when you're done with it, I just put it underneath a piece of tin foil on a plate. Nothing to it. A plate full of tea is here at Cook. Like a bastard. Okay, the carnitas has been um, simmering for about three hours now. And most of the moisture is gone. You can tell by the, the, the pork is starting to shred a little bit. So I'm going to take out my flavor package here which was the um, marjoram and, and the bay leaf and the coriander. We also take out the bone. Check if there's any, any pork goodness I might want to bring back here. And I just got this little bit left here. And so what we're going to do here, we're going to turn the heat up just a little bit. And we're going to let it simmer in the fats that are at the bottom. And this is where the flavor happens. And I think it actually needs a lime at this time. I'm going to pour, pour juice, one more lime in here. And just mix this up and now you're going to heat it and now you're going to brown it on the bottom here. You're going to be tending this for, oh, about 20 minutes or so. And boy, it's going to be the longest 20 minutes you've ever experienced because this is really tasty and I know you want to be eating it too. And here and cook like a bastard. Boy, there's nothing worse than a bad margarita. Can you imagine putting sour in one? Ugh. They're very simple. There are five ingredients. Tequila, Cointreau, lime juice, ice, and salt. Everybody. Five ingredients. Tequila, Cointreau, lime juice, ice, kosher salt. All right. Now, how do you mix all these things together? Well, I want you to think of three numbers. That's three, two, and one. You take three parts lime. You take two parts tequila. Take one part Cointreau. Remember, it's three, two, one. Or one, two, three, depending on how you do it. Or maybe two, one, three. Boy, now it's getting confusing because we're out of order. But the good thing you can think about while you're shaking. The other thing you can think about when you're shaking is, where's that internet? Where's where is cooklikeabastard.com? Well, it's right there at cooklikeabastard.com. And you know what? If you look at the shop on cooklikeabastard.com, you're even going to find a shaker with, yeah, right on it. What a world. What a world. What a world. All right. So we're shaking this guy here, taking my ice. When I say ice, I mean the melted ice that's turned into salt, of course. And um, just pour, um, pouring it on this lid. I take a lime. I've already fresh squeezed my limes before. And then you just run around the top here. Go like this. Go like this. One more shake for 
the Pope or whoever else wants to be shaken for. Now you're cooking like a bastard, aren't you? Five, Five things. Tequila, Cointreau, Cointreau lime juice, juice ice, ice, and salt. salt. So good. Three, two, one. Don't forget it here and cook. Like a bastard. Well, this was quite a process. We made our own carnitas. Now, this took a while. It probably actually took four hours in total, but it was well worth it because we got to taste this. We made our own tortillas, and remember, we made our salsa. And just a moment. That's right. We made our own margarita with five ingredients. Think about them at home. Don't make that mistake. So, let's put this together. I'm going to take a little of the carnitas here. Let's put a little bit of salsa. A few sprigs of cilantro here. I just got a couple, it's kind of a sweet onion here. Oh, the beauty of this, the simplicity of it. and the flavor. Again, a fantastic meal here in Cook Like a Bastard. Carnitas pork, flour tortillas, great salsa, margaritas with five ingredients right here on Cook Like a Bastard. today